In this video, we're going to configure MD5 authentication for OSPF version 2. We configured MD5 authentication for EIGRP as well. However, with EIGRP, we were able to use a key chain, a collection of keys. We don't have that option with OSPF version 2. However, we can create more than one key. And if we want to get rid of an older key, what we can do is add on a new key to all of the router interfaces connected to the same subnet. We give each of those interfaces on all of those routers the new key, and then we can go delete the old key. And Cisco does a good job of making sure that this is not going to interrupt service. Because if I do have a couple of keys configured right now, my router is going to be able to send both keys to try to authenticate with a neighbor, and I will accept both keys if a neighbor is trying to authenticate with me. Then we can go in and delete the old key. And the reason we're able to delete the old key without messing things up is that this MD5 authentication wants to use the newest key. We'll see a verification command a little bit later in this video that will tell us what is the youngest key. And the youngest key doesn't have anything to do with the key ID. It's not the highest number or the lowest number. Literally, it's the youngest key. It's the key that's been configured for the shortest amount of time. In our example, we're just going to configure a single key, but I wanted you to understand how we could get rid of an older key and replace it with a newer key. When we configure MD5 authentication for OSPF version 2, it's somewhat similar to the plain text authentication we saw in the previous video. One difference is the key length. With plain text authentication, we had a maximum key length of 8 characters. Now we've got a maximum key length of 16 characters. However, something that's similar is that we can enable this authentication for an area. We do that in router configuration mode, or we can enable it on a specific interface on our router. And just so you can see how to do it each way, I'm going to configure router R1 on screen by going into router configuration mode and enabling OSPF authentication for area 0. All of the interfaces in this topology belong to area 0. And on R2, I'll go into an interface and enable authentication. On router R1, let's go into router configuration mode for OSPF process ID 1. And to enable authentication for area 0, we say area 0 authentication. And context sensitive help shows us that message digest is the only option here. Notice that SHA is not an option, secure hash algorithm, not an option here. And I'm using Cisco IOS 15.2, which is what the route course is based on. However, you might run into some flavor or version of Cisco IOS that does support SHA for OSPF authentication. One of the RFCs for OSPF version 2 says that, yes, you can do SHA. So your results may vary depending on what version, what flavor of Cisco IOS that you happen to be running. In my case, I don't have an option, so I'm going to say message digest. And now I need to go into the interface. Let's go into interface serial 1 slash 0 and let's specify the key that's going to be used for the authentication. I'll say IP OSPF message hyphen digest hyphen key and now I can specify this key ID. Remember we said that we could have more than one key? Well they're going to be identified by a key ID. And here's the big point. The key IDs do not have to match on neighboring routers. It's not that key 1 has to be a certain string on R1 and key 1 has to be that same string on R2. No, I could have a key 1 here and a key 3 there. As long as the strings match, then we're going to be okay. Oh, did you notice just now? Because I'm now requiring authentication, I lost my neighborship. And here I'll just use a message key of 1. And MD5, again, is my only option for hashing. I'll say MD5. And now I give the key. And I'm going to say the key is key lime. We've now configured MD5 authentication for OSPF version 2 on router R1. Let's go to router R2 and let's do everything from interface configuration mode. Let's go into interface serial 1 slash 0. And we will enable OSPF authentication by saying IP OSPF authentication. And again, we're going to say message hyphen digest. Next, we specify the key, just like we did before, IP OSPF message hyphen digest hyphen key. I'll give another key ID of 1, but it could be something else. And I'm going to use MD5. That's my only option. And my key string is going to be key lime. And after entering this, let's see if our neighborship comes back up. We saw it went down earlier when we required authentication. Yes, indeed. Check it out. It says we just went from loading to full. We can verify this with a show IP OSPF neighbor command. There's our neighbor, that's R1. But the main verification command I wanted to show you was this. It's show IP OSPF interface 
followed by the interface identifier for the interface that's doing the authentication, serial 1 slash 0 here on R2. And take a look at the bottom two lines of the output. It tells us what kind of authentication we're using. It says, Message Digest Authentication is enabled. And it says that the youngest key ID is 1. And as a reminder, that youngest key ID is not necessarily the lowest key ID or the highest key ID. It's literally the key that has been configured the shortest amount of time. And that's the way that we can rotate keys. To get rid of an old key and put a new key on our router, we can just add a new key to all of the interfaces in this subnet. And that's going to be the youngest key for all of those routers. Then we just go around to the routers and we delete the older key. And that's a look at how we can configure MD5 neighbor authentication for OSPF version 2.